Hello, welcome back. So today, my Audi, it's knocking. It's been knocking for a while. It's a suspension knock. I don't know much more than that, but we're going to bring it in, have a look at it, see what's wrong. I've got a new drive shaft I want to fit, and I've got a strut top I'm also going to fit, just because it was £16 and I thought it was worth a go. But we're going to bring it in, have a look, and go from there. Beautiful. So it's jacked up, I've got an axle stand underneath the subframe, it's now time to take the wheel off. So I'm just going to use a bar just to check a few of the ball joints. Now, not that, you can't really tell, but these were actually replaced a few months ago, um, because I had the issue at the time, and I, a lot of the bushes and, you know, the bushes and the rubbers looked a little bit deteriorated, so I thought I'd change them as a common problem however it didn't really fix the noise and if i'm honest it's actually got worse so the noise isn't consistent is it? either it's it kind of comes and goes i can't always make it do it but when it does do it it's bad but i've looked a few times now i've never found anything wrong with it never, nothing obvious anyway so I'm, I'm kind of getting to the point where i'm a little bit unsure what's wrong with it they all look good. So I th what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to take the brakes and that off and investigate a little bit further because make it a little bit easier to see. Just putting it in lock now so I can get to the caliper bolts. As you can probably see, the brakes are fairly new. So this shouldn't take a lot of uh, getting off. Again, I'm going to take this cover off, purely for the fact I can't see a great deal. It'll help me to see, and it'll help you guys to see what I'm doing. Now, it's been off fairly recently, so again, it should all come out quite easily. One interesting point to make is the UK roads are obviously salted, and this was wire-wheeled three or four months ago to a, I wouldn't say a mirror shine, but a very clean aluminium shine. And look at all the corrosion on it already. It's amazing, really. So, it doesn't do our classic cars any favours, this, this salt. There you go, that's off. Remove the ABS sensor. Don't want to risk breaking that. So the knock sounds like a ball joint to me. It's got like a very strong metallic clunk. I just can't replicate it. Very frustrating, but these Audis have got quite complex multi-link suspension systems. So there's a lot to go wrong, if you know what I mean. So I'm gonna unbolt the bottom arms. So I can take the drive shaft out properly. I've got a really good second hand shaft I'm going to try because occasionally there is a little bit of CV clicking noise. I've got a drive shaft off a low mileage A6 from a breakers, which looks in really good condition. It feels really good. So I'm just going to stick that on, see what happens. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't get a socket on this uh, nut on this bottom arm, but again, but arms have all been replaced relatively recently so everything just slides off nicely it's actually a pleasure to work on that's one obviously you can get a, uh, a socket on this one however they're so easy to get off i can't really be bothered that beautiful now the inner CV joints on these bolt on which is quite handy because you don't lose any oil 
quite a good design. I like it. Some people don't, but I do. So it's an M10 spline socket. And away we go. You know what? I've got this, I might as well use it. A little bit awkward to get to these, but not too bad. So that end is now off. This may even come out without taking the ball joint out. And it will. Now I've got this out, I'm going to be honest, I'm not convinced that's the problem. Inner CV joint's not very old, it is a cheap one. It's got a little bit of play in it. But nothing too serious. Outer, again, the same. So I'll put the other one in because I've got it, but again, I'm not convinced. Which is rather upsetting. Because it means we're back to the drawing board a little bit. So if you guys have got any idea what this could be, knocking noise, which is relatively intermittent, tends to do it low speed in a little bit of lock, and it really does sound like a loose ball, ball joint. I mean, I've had a lot of um, a lot of Novas and stuff over the years, high powered Novas, and the bottom ball joints sometimes come loose in them because they bolt on, and it's kind of got that kind of noise and feel about it. So yeah. Really not sure. I'm hoping to see some signs of rubbing somewhere because it's a definitely a metal on metal noise. It's a quite a loud, distinctive clunk when it does it. That's the problem when it does it. I say all these arms are new. Like I said, I've got a brand new strut top to also try. It was £16 for a Febby Bilstein one, so really cheap. And worth a go. Not convinced, but sometimes you've got to rule these things out. That's the bottom mount out the shockers over. And again, Bush looks really good. The bolt of doom. These tend to break. When I did the arms last time, the bolt broke. I spent about five hours trying to get the bolt out. Not fun, but I did get it out and I managed to get a new one and we're good again. But again, all them ball joints feel really good. They were obviously clearly tight in there, so it wasn't that. So whenever I build things like this back up, I always use plenty of copper slip just to help lubricate things and stop things from seizing in the future. So uh, it's a good little tip and it's always worked for me. Some people say, oh, if you put too much on it, you know, you could get problems, but personally, I've never experienced it. Um, nothing's ever come loose that's been talked or properly. But I have been to things years later, for example, my Nova and... Uh, the bolts just fall out when you want them to obviously and that is off again I did have concerns that the the pressed steel insert inside this might be loose causing a knock-in but looking at it it looks absolutely spot-on which is a little bit annoying Again, everything looks really good. So yeah, it's not that. Like I say guys, if you can think of what could be wrong with this, let me know in the comments box, I will appreciate it. It's driving me insane. Slight issue, there is a metal bracket off the transmission. 
the transmission yeah transmission and there is a bolt missing out of that it does mount the exhaust to it so obviously that could be banging I think that is hmm definitely leaking a bit of exhaust gases out the uh, out the seal next to it so I'm gonna have to investigate that I think I'm gonna win whip this uh, strut off do the strut top now and that should be free so one strut top of Timberley. Again, arms not very old. Look good. As you'd imagine, they've done probably three, four thousand miles. Not overly convinced there's anything wrong with the strut top. However, I'm going to try it. So I've got my trusty faithful. I think 60 pound eBay spring compressor. It's been very handy over the years. Made me a few quid, which is always nice. Now guys, I would say you want a half decent spring compressor for a job like this. They're strong, powerful springs. And if they come out the clamps and it hits you in the head, you could die. My old boss um, once unfortunately fell a victim to a minor spring clamp issue and uh, broke his nose and uh, cut his forehead open. And that was just a small little car, like a little Peugeot, I believe. Um, so something like that would really hurt if it hit you, if not worse. So be nice and sensible. Don't look at the end of it. Don't do anything silly. Respect it and it will respect you. That's in quite well. As you can probably see, hopefully, it's seated really well. You literally wind it up till there's no weight on the top. And then carefully undo the other end. The strut is spinning. It's got an Allen key in the middle of the shock absorber. So I'm just gonna actually wind it out by hand, hopefully. Now it's off, would I say it's knackered? No, I wouldn't. Unfortunately, looks in pretty good condition. Like I said earlier, it was worth a go. One new strut top. Yep, looks good, looks the same. As you can see, it's a Febby Bill Stein strut top, so it's OE quality. Uh, I've actually had these before where they've had the Audi part number written on them and the last few digits being crossed out. So it says a lot, doesn't it? Back together. Same problem, we can't lock it off. So I'll do it by hand with this. Beautiful. So now I need to carefully unwind the spring. Make sure it goes back in the location marks, which may be easier said than done. Perfect. I hope you can see that. Lined up nicely. Just going to check the strut tops tight once again, and then we're done. So I can't find a fault with the strut top. 
The drive shaft looks okay, I believe. Arms all look good. Why is it knocking? This is a little bit what concerned me earlier. As you can see, the bolt is missing out the top of that. I think it's the uh, DPF mount. And that rusty mark at the bottom suggests that's been loose, but it is sprung mounted, so. Gotta take that with a pinch of salt. I'm gonna investigate further. So I've put a bolt in this bracket here. So I'm not happy. I can't find anything bloody wrong with it. Really frustrating. The drive shaft I've bought is for a manual car and it's slightly longer, so I believe it must be slightly different. This is an auto. Um, my CV joints look, I've had a better look at them and they look spot on to be fair. So I don't think it's that. All the ball joints look good. All the bushes look good. The subframe looks okay because it's rubber mounted. I'm beginning to wonder if this fault is inside the diff in the gearbox because I've had the I've had a diff fail in the past on a uh, on a front wheel drive Calibra and it was making similar intermittent clunky noises and obviously the gearbox being relatively centered to the vehicle that's here you could hear that I'm assuming in the cab quite a lot and it will give you the impression it's this area so I'm a little bit disillusioned with the car. I'm going to build it back up and uh, we'll go for a road test and see if there's any differences, but I, I very much doubt there will be. Right. Strut is now in. Now it's time to put the clamp bolt in. Put the other right in. So connect all the ball joints back up. Brakes back on. And it's ready for a road test. Nice and tight. A little bit fiddly to get these in. As you can see, there's quite a lot of stuff to line up. However, persistence pays off. And you get there in the end. I'll put a little bit more copper grease in these. It's not the kind of thing you want to seize up. I know, because I've done one or two. That's it. Beautiful. Wasn't the uh, best design of ours, is this pinch bolt. The fact it goes through two ball joints makes it quite difficult to uh, get out in case it seizes. Obviously, it's, this is aluminium, not steel. The two naturally corrode when you put them together. So yeah, it wasn't the best idea. But hey, hey. I forgive them. Nice and tight. That's that back in. FT. Lower ball joints. Again, FT, as everybody knows, stands for fairly tight. I believe, anyway. ABS sensor. And the mount for it. And it's time for the back plate. Perfect. Brake disc. Again, this is a, a clean hub and stuff. I cleaned it up last time. It's still in good condition. So I'd normally recommend using a wire wheel and cleaning it up prior to refitting, but it's, it's good. You don't really need to over tighten the retaining screw. It's literally just there for assembly. Once the wheel's on it, the disc is held on anyway. <laughs> Brake caliper. I'd always recommend tightening the caliper before you put the crowded end in. Gives you a little bit more flexibility. And last of all, the track red end. And finally, the wheel. And this should be torqued up to 110 newton meters. Back together, 
I'm going to go on a road test now, see what happens. Not very confident, but hey ho. <laughs> right guys, so I'm back from the road test. The clunking noise has gone. However, it always seems to go. When I jack the vehicle up, if I pry about with the suspension, jack it up, put it back down, the noise always seems to disappear for you know a few miles. So I'm not 100% convinced it's fixed. However, as you can see, the strut top was worn. There is a little bit of wear around the edge. Not 100% sure that's the fault, but there is some wear. So you know, I'm not saying it needed it, but you know it may help. So like I say, been for the road test. I've tried all the normal stuff. I've driven it hard, driven it slow, lock to lock, you know, all, all the usual stuff. It hasn't clunked once, so I am going to say it's fixed for now, but I'm not sure. If, so if you think you know what's wrong with the car, please leave a comment in the comments box below. I would appreciate it. I am at my wit's end with the car, if I'm honest. I've done quite a lot of work to it, and it just seems to be kicking me in the teeth. So, yeah, let me know what you think was, is wrong with the car. And if the fault does reoccur, I'll let you know. If and it doesn't, I'll also let you know. So, anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.